Hello RT people! In this video we are looking at miniatures. I love miniatures. I even spent most of my degree making miniature models. Like this one, this one, this one, and this one. I even wrote my dissertation about why people love miniatures. It's because they're so cute! Today I'm going to show you how to make miniature food. Specifically, miniature pastries perfect for a tiny brunch. This can be done with clay or something like FIMO, but I wanted to go old school and use salt dough. I like using salt dough to make miniature food. Because it's made of food stuff, it gives the models a food quality. You'll see what I mean. On with the making! So the ingredients are plain flour, salt and water. The ratio of ingredients are roughly 2 to 1 to 1. So in a small pot, I'm going to measure out two tablespoons of flour, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of water. Then mix all the ingredients together until they form a dough. If your mixture is a little bit dry, you can always add more water. First up, we're going to make a croissant. So take a piece of dough and roll it out. I'm just using a pen as a rolling pin. You want to roll it out fairly thinly and make sure it doesn't stick to your surface. Then, using a craft knife, cut out a tall, skinny triangle shape. Then get rid of the excess. Now you want to roll your triangle starting at the base and then curl the edges in to make that croissant shape. Next, we're going to make a pan or raisin. For this, you'll need to start with a long, thin sausage shape. Go slow and be gentle as the salt dough can sometimes crumble when you're rolling it out. Then curl the dough into a spiral shape. To make the little raisins, roll tiny pieces of dough and press them onto the main piece. This can be quite fiddly. If you're having trouble getting them to stick, just dab a bit of water onto the dough. Next we're going to make my favourite, a cinnamon swirl. This one also starts with a long, thin sausage shape. Then you need to make an even thinner sausage shape, about the same length as the first one. This will be the cinnamon filling of the cinnamon swap. Press this down flat. This piece might be quite fragile, so take care when lifting it up. Dab on some water to stick them together. Add a bit more water and then roll it into a spiral. Make sure the smaller piece stays in the middle. And finally, we're going to make a classic Danish pastry. Take a small piece of dough and press it flat in the centre. Push the edges out. You want it to be an irregular shape rather than a perfect circle. Then roll the edges in. Dab some water in the centre, then add some small balls of dough. These are the fruit. So they could be cherries or strawberries, whatever you fancy. Salt dough needs to be dried out, so take a baking tray with some baking paper and lay out all your pieces. 
set your oven to a low temperature, less than 100 degrees Celsius, and bake the salt dough for 15 to 30 minutes. It may need longer depending on how big your pieces are. You can tell when they're ready as they go white and hard. And now you're ready to decorate. To paint the salt dough, I'm using a range of artist acrylic paint and cheap craft paint. You'll need the smallest brushes you have. I'm even using some from a nail art set. And I'll be using some PVA glue. To paint the croissant, I'm mixing up a light golden colour using raw sienna, white and a bit of yellow. You'll want to paint this colour all over the croissant. This is actually the base colour of all of the items, so you can go ahead and paint everything with this colour first. Once that's dried, you need to mix up a darker golden colour by adding some brown. How dark you go depends on how well done you like your pastries. Lightly brush this onto the croissant, avoiding the creases. To get that egg wash glaze look, I'm going to paint on a bit of PVA onto the croissant. When the glue is dried, it will give you that just baked sheen. That's a thing, right? For the pan or raisin, I've already done a coat of the lighter golden colour, so now I'm going over the top with the darker. To paint the raisins, I'm mixing some black and brown, and I'm using my tiniest brush. Then I'm using the PVA glue again as a glaze, paying special attention to the raisins to make them super shiny. For the cinnamon swirl, I've already painted the light and dark golden colours, so now I'm mixing up a dark brown colour. And this will be the cinnamon filling. When painting it on, you want to aim for that thin layer of dough in the middle, but don't worry about it being too neat. That cinnamon stuff gets everywhere anyway. Then add the glaze with the glue. When that's dry, mix a bit of white paint with the glue, and this will be the icing that drizzles across the top. I haven't got it to a drizzling consistency, so I'm just going to paint it on. For the Danish, I've already painted the pastry, so now I just need to paint the fruit. I think I'll make this a cherry Danish, so I'm mixing together red and blue with a bit of pink. Then I'll paint that onto the fruit pieces, making sure to get in all the cracks, and on the pastry underneath, as there's always that jam stuff that spreads everywhere. Then I'm going to paint glue around the edges, and in the middle I'm going to put a lot of glue because I want to get that shiny jam look. So there we go, four different miniature pastries. I really like how the texture of the salt dough makes these look so realistic. Aren't they adorable? I hope you found that video useful.
let me know if there's any other foods you'd like to see me make. Put your suggestions in the comments below. There'll also be a link to a blog post on this project. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my Etsy shop. Thanks for watching, bye!